and expose magicians. Magicians, let me debunk them with my surviving plane crash powers. I'll leave you with something magical. When I started off as a comedian uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, for some reason, I opened up for a lot of comedy magicians. Comedy magicians just ruled the landscape in the early 90s. Because it, back then it was like, hey, are you a shitty comedian? Learn a magic trick. Are you a boring magician? Learn a dick joke. You can make a hundred grand a year. And they did. These guys were the kings. They just ruled. So. Um, I did a one-nighter at a sports bar in Richmond, Kentucky. I did it, and we get there. I'm opening for a comedy magician. I'm getting $25 to open. He's getting $75 to close. I really needed that $25. <laughs> I needed it very badly. So we get to the sports bar, and the bartender meets us and says, Brad Booker told you wrong, because the opening guy, you're getting 20, and a magic man, you're just going to get 70. We've been shorted $5. There's nothing I can do. I need the 20. I'm in. The magician has the ugliest meltdown I've ever <laughs> seen. He doesn't scream and yell either. He does that thing when you get so fucking angry. You begin speaking very quietly, but you over-enunciate every word that comes out of your mouth because what you're telling me is the $75 that I was contractually told I would receive has been reduced to $70. Is that what the fuck you're saying? And the bartender's reaction is, yep, yeah, that's what the book is said. <laughs> like, he can't see murder when it's an inch from his face. So... The way that a comedy magician worked was they had a stool on stage, and on the stool they would put a suitcase, open suitcase, and in the suitcase they had arranged very neatly all of their magic tricks. And then over here they had a laundry hamper. So what they would do is they'd reach into the suitcase, they'd grab a trick. They'd do the trick. They'd do a joke. Eh, John Wayne Bobbitt. They would then take the now completed trick and throw it into the hamper. So at the end of the set, stage is not all cluttered. They just grab the hamper, they grab the suitcase, they go off stage, and they reload the suitcase from the hamper, which I've seen happen dozens of times. It's the saddest thing I've ever seen. It is, it's a Tom Waits song come to life, where it's, and the sad old magician is reloading his suitcase, and the one-legged man is fucking horrible. It's horrible. But that's how they did it. I go out, I do my set, silence, boo, thank you. I go off stage, the magician goes out. He is so pissed off at the bartender, still, still furious. Here's how he does his act. Ready? All right, I got a ball in my hand. Now it's two balls, now it's three, now it's one again, okay? Bam! Now, I got a rope, it's one rope, I snip it in two, it's two, now it's one again. Okay? Bam! No banter, no jokes. Hate fucked the crowd with magic for ten minutes. It was fucking amazing. And what was kind of, what kind of sad was he was an amazing magician. He was really good. So there was something really beautiful about that level of skill just used for petty vengeance. Just a guy, like a wonder worker. Oh, look, it's a rabbit out of a hat, you fucking faggots. Blam. <laughs> and by the way, that was his abracadabra. Okay. 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 And let's review. What invoked the wrath of the wizard? Five dollars. Five dollars? Really? I thought to piss off a warlock, you had to burn down his village or kill his familiar something. No, all you have to do, steal five dollars from him. Twenty quarters. 
20 games of Galaga and he will invoke a... He will invoke a thorny doom from beneath the crust of the earth. Okay! The crowd hated him. <laughs> they fucking hated him. Dead silent. Dead silent watching him. I'm in the back of the room laughing so fucking hard. <laughs> so I, could, I was howling. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. So the crowd would watch the magician. Then they'd look back at me... Then they'd look back at the magician like they're trying to piece this together. Is this some kind of avant-garde German theater bullshit where a comedian goes up and he just fucking sucks and then, and then a magician goes on and he yells at us and then they dress a lesbian in boy's clothing in the back of the room and you realize halfway through, oh, that's that shitty fucking comedian. And he's back there cackling in the darkness like a, a half-remembered nightmare through a cracked mirror of regret. Is that what the... Because if that's what the fuck this is, I've seen it done better. That's all I'm saying, man. <laughs>